Hello, and welcome back to the ongoing series of videos on the history of Japanese prints and the collection of Japanese works on paper at the Honolulu Museum of Art. I'm Stephen Salel, the curator of Japanese art. In our last video, we discussed how woodblock printing became popular in the early 17th century, how the earliest publications were books, and how illustrations in such books gradually gained attention as important artworks in and of themselves. Several authors of early novels, such as Asai Ryoi, achieved national fame. However, for a long time, the artists who designed book illustrations remained anonymous. One of the earliest Japanese print designers whose name we know and whose artwork has survived is Hishikawa Moronobu. Moronobu grew up in present-day Chiba Prefecture, not far from the capital of Edo. He originally trained to follow in his father's footsteps as a textile artisan who specialized in dyeing and brocade designs. After studying painting for several years, he began producing prints around the early 1670s, and he quickly became one of the most highly respected print designers in the country. The majority of prints that Moronobu designed were illustrations for books. Although these publications also included novels with a significant amount of text, such as Tale of the Original Mokuami, a sizable number were picture books, ehon, that often function as visual encyclopedias, documenting aspects of the world around him, such as pre-existing works of fine art, creatures in the animal kingdom, and the best poems in the history of Japanese literature. This particular book portrays various social types throughout Japanese society, such as the warrior class and the farmer class, as the title implies, as well as various professions within and outside of that demographic range, including sculptors, hunters, blacksmiths, carpenters, stonemasons, textile artisans, and even prostitutes. As you can see by the works discussed here, Moronobu is difficult to categorize in one particular genre of printmaking. His subject matter varied widely. However, he's well remembered for his portraits of beautiful women, and one of his most celebrated works is a survey of over 60 female characters found in literature, such as The Tale of Genji. In addition to book illustrations, Moronobu was known for producing single-sheet prints, many of which were assembled into unbound folios of 12 images. This is from a series of erotic compositions, and though the image isn't particularly explicit, that's because it's the frontispiece of the portfolio. Inspired by his previous textile studies, Moronobu not only designed the clothing for his figures with intricate detail, but also did so for the border of the print itself. He furthermore imbued the scene with an air of sensuality by intensifying its tonal contrast, deepening the shadows in strategic areas, and connecting those highlights with calligraphic, variegated line work that endlessly draws our eyes back and forth through the composition. Moronobu's focus upon common people, their daily activities, and their interest in simple pleasures closely aligned him with the author Asai Ryoi, who wrote this book, Tales of Ukiyo, 
around 1661 to 1665. Up until that time, the word ukyo had been used in a Buddhist context to describe the realm of suffering. The endless cycle of misery, death, and reincarnation in which all humans are trapped. According to Buddhist doctrine, a morally pure lifestyle, the recitations of sutras, quiet meditation, and other expressions of devotion to the Buddha, can enable a follower to escape from that vicious cycle and be reborn in paradise. In the minds of many commoners, the previous centuries of continuous civil war had left little doubt about the inevitability of suffering and the fundamental importance of Buddhism. Amidst the peace of the 17th century, however, some individuals, such as Ryoi, began to question this stance. The title of Ryoi's book, Tales of Ukyo, is a jocular criticism of Buddhism. The Japanese language only has about 50 phonemes in it, which means that a lot of words sound identical. In a form of wordplay, the author Ryoi altered the kanji in the title, replacing the ideograph for suffering, a word with profound existential angst, with the kanji for floating, which, by contrast, evokes a sense of careless whimsy. The narrative of the book is equally satirical. The protagonist, a Buddhist priest, gains enlightenment through years of debauchery, gambling, and other hedonistic pursuits. Ukyo, as the author has redefined it, now means living only for the moment turning our full attention to the pleasures of the moon, the snow, the cherry blossoms and the maple leaves, singing songs, drinking wine, and diverting ourselves just in floating, floating. The first known usage of the term ukiyo-e, meaning pictures of the floating world, was in a poem published in 1681. And three years later, the term appeared again in the preface to a woodblock printed book by Hishikawa Moronobu entitled A Collection of Further Pictures from the Floating World, or in Japanese, Ukyo Zoku Ezukushi. I hope this video helps to clarify the art historical importance of Hishikawa Moronobu's prints, the origin of the term ukiyo-e, and the connection between the artist and this term. In our next video, we will focus upon the actor prints of Tori Kiyonobu I, a successor of Moronobu, and we will see how the light-hearted attitude of ukiyo-e was expressed within the context of Kabuki theater.